Ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but certainly not by me, Dragor Rapiers. Welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode of Unpopular Methods. Today's episode is straight up out of the Nostalgia Playbook, being that we're going to be taking a look at Melee Nex. Now, Melee Nex is a method that was used when I came back to the game in 2013, uh, basically when Drygore Escape was around, and even after the Drygore nerf, where they originally had about 4,000 accuracy, I think it was 4,096, and then they were cut in half to 2,048. However, even post Drygore Escape, Melee Nex was still a method, because back in those days, if you wanted to use a boss instance, you had to stay in there the entire time. If you teleported out, you could not enter the instance again. Uh, there was no leaving and coming out for one kill trips. That just simply didn't exist. You would have to basically pay 800k GP per kill or have an alt account show up and hold the instance open for you or anything like that. But even then, the problem you ran into was that Nex would alternate between range and mage deflect curses. And since melee didn't have to deal with deflects through the first four phases and only on Zeros, that's kind of where the method was born and honestly was pretty popular until the instance got fixed. After the instance was fixed and you could teleport out doing one kill methods, uh, Nex always praised deflect magic throughout the fight so everyone just swapped over to range usage and that is where the range meta comes from. However we're going to be looking at the old method. This is what I did way back in 2014 and 2015 to make a lot of my uh, starting wealth so to speak. I remember getting a lot of Nex drops uh, Torva plates back when they were like I think they were around 30 to 40 mil because uh, Malevolent was out and Malevolent was best in slot then, so everyone was like, ah, Torva trash. That and there was just a lot less GP in the game, inflation was quite a bit down, so 40 mil back then meant a lot more than 100 mil does today. But without any further rambling on, let's go ahead and get into the preset. I'm just using a Blood Nihil as a familiar to keep things simple. I have a D-Long, a Stat Warhammer, and an EZK and three EOFs. Uh, this is just kind of a, a testing thing. I'm not ex exactly sure what the best EOF is going to be here. I have done one hour of uh, kind of just test runs here and there just to see what it's like. And so far, it's been working out just fine. Uh, if you get Deflect Magic, EZK is very nice for Zero's phase. Stat Hammer pretty much guarantees 100% accuracy. And then D-Long is just kind of fun to help with hit caps. Although, with the soft caps at the boss, it's kind of redundant. And I might not use it. It a whole lot. I do have Jaws of the Abyss here, that's just for if I end up using EZK on Zeros phase to help out a little bit with a Dren management, and then just standard food. You don't really need more than Guthix Rest or Blue Blubbers. Uh, Vuln Bombs are pretty self-explanatory, same with expensive spices, they just boost the Blue Blubbers a little bit more. The Bless Flask is just for prayer, and everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Luck of the Dwarves, just for that extra drop chance. Spear to get out all the bleed damage, and I do have a Cleave Swap, just because I didn't really know what else to throw in here. And just Overload, Vestments. Now, if you think this preset's a little bit expensive for doing next, yes, you are absolutely right. This is probably too ridiculous of a preset to be doing this boss, and if you were to seriously farm out this boss for GP, range is going to be the better method. However, this method isn't too bad. It gets into the low twos, and I'm sure some of the melee camps have figured out even faster rotations. I believe back then there was some rotations that could do in the 140s to 150s with uh, TM W Kopesh. Uh, it took a lot of setup from what I remember. It wasn't really a casual method, but melee is kind of fun. And later on, I might take a look at a budget, you know, just as cheap as I can go type of preset just to see what that feels like. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get into a kill. I did an hour beforehand. Uh, I started recording. And it was just to kind of get a feel for what's going on, see if I remember how to do this at all. And it pretty much felt like I had never left here, honestly. I've done so many kills here. Uh, what even is my next KC? Uh, this one. Yeah, six point. Yeah, I've done a lot of this. And a lot of it was way back in the day. Here I like to... Uh, I found Chaos Roar Overpower. Works pretty nicely into like a hurricane. Yeah, that phases it. And just dismember. I never was a fan of bringing a 
crossbow swap for the minions. I never really liked that. Never felt authentic to like just a traditional like melee gamp setup. Hurricane should phase here, and it does. This minion into another flurry. We used to have to Zerk Blood phase back in the day to get through the HP, but now that we have Overpower, it doesn't really matter. Just Barge, Bleed Assault, Overpower, aim into a basic. I'll hit Hurricane to dive over. The races. Yeah, this feels just like I remember it, honestly. It is nice having the vestments for the little bit of adrenaline. Here we'll Slaughter Walk. Run back in so we don't deal with the uh, annoying spikes that have terrible pathing. Nope, didn't get it. If you're fast enough there, you can uh, dive Surge over to this minion inside of the prison and attack it. Because you're not allowed to attack next when you're in the prison, but for some reason you're able to attack the minion, so it ends up working out. We'll just hit over Power Hurricane just for funsies. Hit Deflect Melee, not too big of a deal. And I'll just preemptively put the Helm on. And we'll just rock Easy K and just send it. Theory this will kill it? Oh, it went into Deflect Magic. Alright, perfect. Yeah, it's crazy how fast Easy K can melt Zeros. That's a lot of fun, I enjoy that. And anything for a drop? Not really. The drops here have definitely, uh, they're definitely a product of their time, that is for sure. Uh, it's enjoyable as a method, you know, I remember, this is exactly how I remember doing it, just running around threshing each of the phases and then hoping for a drop, and it feels just the same as it did in 2014, 2015, uh, when I did it some more in 2017, and... Anytime I've done it in recent years where it's, uh, I did the, I did that endurance run that was pre, uh, animation update. If you notice the animation at next when she's calling out the minions, it goes a lot faster now. It used to take like 16, 17 seconds for her to go through her whole spawn animation, but, uh, that got fixed. I did my endurance run before that came out and I don't know, it was kind of like a fun little mark at the end of an era, so to speak. Uh, if you want to see the endurance run I did, it was a 12 hour run. Uh, no banking, and it's on my channel. I think it's the first video up that I have that's still public, so feel free to check that out. But I think what I'm gonna try now is I'm gonna make a preset that is as cheap as possible, and we'll see how that feels here. All right, I have a considerably cheaper version of the melee preset here. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff missing. It's just food, an A-pot, some prayer source, uh, some Vuln Bombs and an Overload. I didn't even use spells last time. They're kind of just in there to look pretty. I do sometimes use Disruption Shield, but honestly, it's not too often. And that's about it as far as the inventory is concerned. And weapons and armor, it's just a three-piece masterwork. For some reason, Passage Gloves are like 70 mil. It's actually because no one wants to do Magister anymore because Kopesh have been dead content since Glacor release, but I digress. And so I just have Masterwork Gloves in here because they're a cheap alternative. Jaws of the Abyss, I'm pretty sure is cheaper than the regular Masterwork Helm, so you might as well go for it and get a little bit of extra adrenaline once in a while. And I just have the Tier 85 Wangs. These are like the Drygor Kopesh absolute killers because they don't share cooldown with Hurricane and Destroy, or Destroy and Hurricane used to share cooldown. However, with these swords and the Lang swords, that is no longer the case, and you can Hurricane with them as well. And then Laceration Boots are in here because they're cheap, and I had to dig in the dark depths of my bank in that junk tab to find this old relic of a pocket slot. The Illuminated Book of Law used to be the king pocket slot here, and honestly it probably still is, but everyone grims everything at this point so it doesn't really matter. 
but this thing used to be a powerhouse of a pocket slot back when we didn't have anything else. It was either this or Vamp Scrim were your two choices. So we would just go ahead and use this because it does a bunch of hits and it can help out with killing minions if you get a proc on a good tick, like when you just start killing a minion. If you get a book proc, that's always really nice. And yeah, it'll be fun to finally use this again. Now, as far as the EOF is concerned, it's just a declaw EOF. I don't really know which else to bring. Actually, let's go ahead and bring the uh bring the d-long eof i feel like that's probably gonna be a bit more useful rather than d-claw because d-claw is 50 percent i don't really see this preset getting too much adren gain unless i was really bleed spamming but eh, d-long helps ignore hit caps so shouldn't be too much of a problem there and honestly that's about it we'll just go ahead and send it per usual and see how it performs I imagine it's going to feel a lot similar to the runs that I used to do back in the day. But we will just have to see. Go ahead and surge in. Eh, let's just go ahead and use the old T95 prayer just for funsies. Overload, book on. Dissipate. Barge, bleed assault. For power. I should have brought a Quake Swap. I used to have Scythe back in the day, but I didn't want to bring it because those are like 300 mil now. There's a lot of stuff that's really expensive. But yeah, that felt just about normal. <laughs> just as I remember it from back in the day. I won't lie, this episode halfway is an excuse for me to just like come back and use Melee here for a little bit. Because I don't do it anymore, and I kind of missed it. I was having one of those nostalgia trip days, where I just woke up and was like, Oh man, I remember the good old times, how we splashed. Actually splashing in current year, what a concept. And for the minions, I always just use Dismember into a flurry. I never brought a range swap. I never liked bringing a range swap. Uh, it didn't feel right as far as, you know, like using melee here it's like if i want to use range i would bring range so i'm gonna use melee and just use melee abilities on the minions and that was kind of my thought process back then all right got through that no problem yeah back in the day we used to have to zerk on uh blood phase so i went ahead and did it there just for kind of the fun factor i'm sure overpower would phase it just fine on this preset Now we got stuck in the prison, I'll just overpower after this. Use those modern abilities to the get some good damage out. Oh yeah, double 7k, love to see it. Here I would have to do like a bleed rotation and other stuff with like assault. Although back in the day, I remember back far enough where I could use, uh, I could attack next inside of the ice prison and that was really nice and then they updated it. And now we're on to Zeros, where I just kind of sit here and use some random abilities. For reses when needed. Oh, it's not bound. That's why it's not equipping. Oh, we got Deflect Melee, or Mage, so now I can just use Bleeds. That's kind of the thing about Zeros, is you're just more so hit spamming because you're going to hit pretty low regardless. But yeah, this this definitely feels familiar. I remember doing this a long time ago. And the book procs were massive back then. Illuminated book. Uh, I have not seen that animation in I don't know how many years. And let's see what we get. Uncut Dragonstone, that's par for the course. Yeah, the common drops here are definitely a product of their time. But overall, this is a fun method. Uh, if you did melee next back in the day, I would definitely suggest coming back here just for nostalgia's sake. If you were to seriously farm this boss, I would say just bring range gear if you have it, because it's probably going to be faster. Although, three minutes for how cheap this setup is, that's not too bad at all considering the cost and what 
the drops are worth. Like, Torva Plate's no joke. Virtus is no joke. Pernix is no joke because the components are expensive. And they're getting used to make the T92 armors that everyone wants. It's been kept alive with uh, updates, which is nice to see. Although I do understand bosses getting power crept. The Nex has definitely been power crept. You know, on release, it wasn't soloable. And it wasn't soloable for a long time until EOC release. And then Drygore Escape happened on KK release where Drygores had like 4,000 accuracy and you could just hit through everything and so that's what people did. I miss those days dearly, but I understand why they're gone. But anyways, before I ramble on about more history and nostalgia, overall thoughts, let's get these overall thoughts down pat and what I think about melee next. So it's definitely a viable method. There is nothing wrong with using melee at next. You could go quite a bit quicker with comparable range gear as far as cost is concerned on something like on a best in slot setup. Range is going to dominate with ECB and Gricko and Rapid rapid fire and dead shot like those abilities are just going to absolutely destroy next in comparison to melee easy k can melt zeros rather quickly but the extra hit span from ecb that range has is going to help it out plus Gricko can still one shot minions so you have that as well but if you're rocking on a tight budget and you're on a melee setup right now you can easily go to next and get some kills to make some extra side gp or knock out a reaper task or do something like that and and if that's what you want to do, I recommend it. Now, if you guys would want to see a more in-depth guide on this budget setup where I have like just a full uh, commentated kill on the ability rotations I'm using and actually doing some more testing on it, I could easily put out a melee next guide for the budget-minded individual or I could just put out a flat-out best-in-slot guide for log hunters because who doesn't love a solid meme? Because as fast as I think I could make melee next, range is going to outpace it any day, but there's always those people out there who, uh, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword, and that's how they want to play. And hey, fair enough. If you want to play like that, go for it, man. Nothing's stopping you. But overall, those are my thoughts on Melee Next. It was fun to go back to the boss with the classic setup and run through and do a couple kills again. I did enjoy it a lot, uh, kind of triggering a lot of those nostalgic memories of staying up really late in college. Uh, probably should have been doing homework, but I was definitely doing Melee Next instead because XP is forever and so is G. GP. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and roll that outro. Ladies, gentlemen, and I did not forget about you Dragor Rapiers. Thank you very much for watching. Your viewership is greatly appreciated. As always, have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever it is, wherever you are, and I'll see you next time for the next episode of Unpopular Methods. Peace.